Hello and welcome back to another episode of Steve's Reviews. So today, we're going to take a look at this, the Amazfit Bip, which is already on my hand. The Amazfit Bip is an impressive piece of kit. Despite being thinner than your regular issue of Cosmopolitan, it certainly packs a punch. It has a beautiful always-on LCD display that can be backlit at the press of a button. It has integrated GPS with both UK and Russian satellite support. It also has a barometer, pedometer, sleep monitor, heart monitor and all the other kinds of ometers that you would want. Now the question is, is the Amazfit Bip the best, cheapest fitness tracker available? Well, I'm going to go into some stuff now. Now, interestingly, this has only just become available in the US and possibly the UK, but I've actually had this for a couple of months now, just sitting around waiting to be reviewed. And the reason it's been sat there is because before now, the language was purely in Chinese. And whereas there isn't much to do on the watch itself, it's still a bit of an irritant. But now they've updated it, and it's in the Queen's English. So, what is the Amazfit Bip? Well, it's a collaboration between the company Xiaomi and Amazfit. Think of this like the Xiaomi Mi Band 2.5. It does a very similar thing and functions in the same way using the exact same app but it has a lot more features. Let's have a look at some of them. So the first thing you'll notice is that the display is always on. Now this is a very similar display to that of a Game Boy Color, for example. It's a full color LCD display that isn't backlit at the moment. Now, like this, I think it looks beautiful and actually, this particular camera doesn't do it justice. It really looks lovely in daylight. Let me see if I can get a torch on there just to show you how it would look in sort of daylight. There we are. That's a little bit better. So honestly, it is a really nice display when the backlight is off. However, when the backlight's on, it's another story. I think it looks a little bit violent it looks very garish, but okay, you're not going to use it that much in this particular mode, and you can always turn the backlight off. But for this purpose, I thought I would show you anyway. Now, pressing this button here on the side unlocks the display. Now, straight away, we're dis given a display with much more information than the Xiaomi Mi Band 2. We're given the time, we're given the last heart rate it took, and we're given the amount of steps I've done today. Now, we can swipe on this display as well. So rather than just being one button, you can actually use it as a touch screen. So I can swipe down, for example. I can swipe up. I can swipe right. There we are, right. So there's a couple of different options I've got there. Now, swiping down gives me access to Do Not Disturb, which basically turns off all notifications coming through to the watch. So if you're in bed or you're in a meeting and you don't want to be disturbed, that's an easy way of turning off notifications to your wrist. Swiping up, we get access to uh, previous notifications. So I've got a few bits and bobs, ignore most of those, but they're just notifications that have come through to the phone. So you've got the full text right in there, which is really good and only expensive smartwatches generally show you that but for a fitness tracker i think that's really cool now moving to the right we've got access to a few other things we've got a status which takes me to um, a heart rate sensor and also a few more bits of information about um, my day in terms of activity we've got activity so this allows me to do a constant activity tracking um, type exercise so i've got outdoor running I've got treadmill cycling walking and my history so i can tap in history and i can see 
um, some examples of where I've done some activity tracking in the past. So we've also got weather, which is taken from the phone. We've got alarm, which is an alarm. We've got a timer, which is a timer. And lastly, we've got compass. Now this is quite cool. Um, it's telling me to follow a certain pattern to calibrate it, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to skip it. Now, it probably won't get any of these readings because I live in a brick fortress, basically. And all of this sort of information is pretty hard to obtain when inside a house. Now, you can see here it's got the pressure as 1004 HPA whatever that means but it's got a reading anyway let's go back because i don't want to go on pressure anymore it's pretty pointless and we've got settings now in the settings we can change the watch face to look different uh that's horrendous looks like scooby-doo the mystery machine uh this is pretty cool this looks more like a sort of casio watch uh, we've got the one that is my favorite that looks more like the xiaomi mi band 2 We've got one that's a bit more smart, again a bit more sophisticated. This looks like the thing from Goldeneye on the Nintendo. But then we've got access to another sort of smart one. That looks a bit like Goldeneye as well. Hmm. Must have been designed by a James Bond fan. Anyway, there's a few different options on here basically. Oh, that's awful. God, that's horrible. Alright, let's go back. Mm, no, 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 I don't want that one. I want... That one. Brilliant. Okay, apply watch face. Good. There we go. And we're back to the beginning. So, that is the functionality of the watch, and that's what it does. Is it good? Well, I think the actual functionality is minimalistic, but it functions very, very well. And like I said, that screen is lovely when in the daylight. Perhaps not in this sort of lighting, but in that lighting, gets a thumbs up from me. Now, there are some features which I haven't been able to show you just yet. The first one is GPS. This thing is very small and very thin, and it has GPS built in. So naturally, I'm going to go for a walk and test it out and see if it's any good. Well, at least it's not raining. Now we're back in the studio. Let's have a look and see how well it recorded uh, the route using the GPS alone. So if I zoom in, you can see right at the very beginning where I started, I actually started about halfway up, you can see where the green dot is. It finds trouble connecting exactly where I am to the GPS. And actually, it does warn you when you start the GPS that it's locating uh, the satellites. Well, if you start walking after that, um, it's fine, it just might not accurately record the first 100 yards or so because it's still finding the satellites. So my tip there is to wait until it finds the satellites if you want the ac most accurate result. Anyway, as soon as it does get connection to it, that's when it becomes very, very stable. So you can see here the route that I took up the mountain, up the mountain weaving backwards and forwards. There we are. There we go, turn back on myself, up I go, right up to the very top of the mountain. And it's and obviously the same route back down as well. So there are no random jumps. If you look right here, it looks like there's a bit of a difference in the route. That's because I took a slightly shorter path on the way back down, so I did cheat slightly. But actually... The route mapped very, very, very well and very accurately to the route that I actually took. Now, as well as this, I can go into further details on this particular walk, find out things like the distance I've gone, my average pace, uh, my heart rate zone as well, alongside my speed, top speed, speed range. And I can also see a chart as well of the speed and heart rate throughout the actual walk itself. Now, if you pop back to speed as well, it's evidently quite accurate because the last mile, the third mile, was going downhill, so therefore, it was my fastest mile, 3.05. So, actually, for accuracy, this is bang on the money. 
I mean, ultimately it uses GPS, so it is very, very, very accurate, especially if you're going for outdoor runs. So overall, it gets a 10 out of 10 for accuracy. Now, alongside the GPS, a few more of the features which I haven't already explained. This has what they say is a 45 day battery life with minimal notifications. And I can, in fact, agree with that. This has a battery that may well be made from some form of plutonium because it does indeed carry on going and going and going and going. Of course, if you're using it a lot, you're using um, you know, the tracking feature, the heart rate, the notifications all of the time, the battery life will go down. And one thing I'll say is that when you're new to these, you tend to use it a lot more than you will maybe a month into using it. So at first the battery might seem a little bit less, but trust me, the more you use it, you'll see that the battery life is ridiculous. I mean, hell, even if it lasts two weeks, it's a lot more than a lot of fitness trackers out there. So I'm really, really impressed. And actually it's very, very similar to the Xiaomi Mi Band 2 in its battery life capabilities. Now the last thing which I haven't shown you is the strap, which you can in fact change. Now I haven't got any other straps with me to change, but this is how you take the strap off. So on the back here, we've got two little things. And all you do is you pull that in like that, and the strap comes off. So very, very straightforward, and feels very secure as well. And then to put it back in, you just do the exact opposite. I think that's a really neat little feature, and it just adds to the customizability of this little device. As for the price, you're looking at about $60. Uh, or about £45, £50, around that sort of mark in UK money. Is it worth that? Well, I'll get onto that in just a second in the conclusion. But guys, as usual, I will leave a link in the description below where you can check it out yourself. This time I found this on Gearbest, but I believe it's been released to lots of different places but Gearbest is where I got it from and like I said link in the description. There's also a few other colours as well you can get it in black, orange, white and green I believe. So is the Amazed Fit a good fitness tracker for the price? Yes I have loved this and actually I'm pretty certain it's now going to replace my Xiaomi Mi Band 2. Genuinely, I have really enjoyed using this and I've been very, very, very impressed with it. I think the kind of upgrade from the Xiaomi Mi Band 2 in the sense of I can get more notifications or more information on those notifications and the fact it's got just a little bit more interactivity and built-in GPS, it makes it a much, much better fitness tracker. Yes, it looks more like a watch, so it might have to replace my watch, which I usually wear. Is that a problem? Not so much. I mean, for 45 quid, this is one of the best fitness trackers I have ever tried. The only thing I would say is a little bit annoying is the display when you turn the backlight on, because it does look like an old Game Boy Color. But... Is that such a big deal? It's something I can definitely live with. And that concludes my review of the Amazfit Bib. Guys, if you like the video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button because it will really, really help me out. And it will help you see more Stu's reviews. And I'll see you back for another episode soon.